All right. So as I'm working around my vector here and rounding out certain shapes just with that cornering tool, sometimes double clicking and turning to curves, sometimes modifying existing curves, sometimes deleting anchor points or moving them. You have all of these options. If you ever lose them, remember, what is going on? Oh, selecting multiple. Take care, Tracy. If you ever lose your anchors, just remember double click in the middle of the shape so you can see them all. You have to be able to see the anchors in order to modify them. And even very professional, very expensive logo design not every part of their anchors and curves is always perfect. In fact, it's often a little off, but we do our best because that's what these programs allow us to do. So now we're getting into the arm and a lot of subtlety in the shapes. And sometimes I'll just want to click on an anchor and delete it so that I can play more with the shapes. I can hold down shift. I can use can do uh, Command D, can use the rounding tool, whatever would make sense to get to my desired result. Mm -hmm. It's curved. So the way I recommend you do it is you plot all with straights, even though that's not what you want, right? So I'll do a little crown here. But make sure you finish it by ending where you started. Then fill it with black, turn off your border, then double click inside it so you can see your anchor points. Now you have two ways you can turn your straight anchors into curved anchors. And that's what I'm doing to kind of manipulate my shapes. One is you see these little circles that are next to the squares. Those are cornering you can round the corners by pulling on those circles. And I'll only let you go as far as the curve runs into the next anchor point. Right. So that's one way. The other way, I think that's a really nice rational way to control it because it's limited by the placement of your anchors and it will always balance your curves. But the other way is to double click on the anchor point. And when you double click on the anchor, it turns it into a curve where you have handles that you can manipulate. All right, yeah, no worries. Oh yeah, your refined sketch is often going to be improved by your other explorations of sketches and by turning it into black, black shapes, you often make slightly different decisions. And because these are graphic logos, right, or graphic symbols, we want them to be clear, versatile, and engaging. So that means we're trying to get the most out of the simplest black shapes that we can. That's why I'm actually getting rid of some of these anchor points. I just don't need them all.
I'm going to round out the little paws. I think I'll keep the fingers fairly sharp. Because I want this flying tiger to feel a little bit like kind of a European coat of arms. Or a Game of Thrones kind of sigil. And you can move your anchor points, you can round them. It's just so much easier if you already plotted it with straights. It takes a little bit longer than plotting curves and straights at the same time, but it makes just a lot more sense, especially if you're starting out. And you can get exactly what you want. I want my tiger bodies, my tiger's body to look organic and dynamic, but also kind of powerful and not too goofy, right? So sometimes if you curve too much, you can lose some strength in the work. And I don't like this vertical that's here. It's kind of an unintentional vertical, so I'm just going to turn that into a diagonal and just round that elbow a tiny bit. Hmm. It won't let me turn it into a curve. So I can round it just a little bit. For those of you who are going to like the vector imaging, you're just going to love how clean it's able to make things. Because it can certainly do that. So when you make a shape, so make a little crown again. The default is to show it with just a border or what we call a stroke, an outline. But each path you make has two properties and they are off on the side. One is the fill. And so you can pick any color, but we're doing everything with black shapes for this. So you use the, the solid 100% black. And then the second is the border. And you want to uncheck the border so it's not there. So I'll, I'll change the color of this border so you can see it. Because you can have both of them turned on in logo design. And maybe you'll want to do that for your color design. Who knows? But we got to do our black shape logo first. But what I want for my black shape logo is all your border to be turned off. And for them all to be filled with just black. And since I created this crown, I could even try to incorporate it into the design, right? Maybe tilt it off to the side like this. And then how would I curve just the bottom of it? Well, I would double click inside it, create an anchor point, bend it up, and then use the cornering tool to round it. But I don't think that really adds anything, so I'll turn that path off. Yeah, let me show you. So I'll do it with this, this crown. So first you have your base shape. My base shape was the head of the tiger. Now I'm going to build other shapes on top of it. And I'll just use the shape tool for it. So I'm going to put little jewels in this crown. So I'm going to use this little hexagon shape. I'm going to make a hexagon. So that I can see it clearly, I'm going to mark it with a color I can see, like red. And I'll turn off. Oh, the board is already turned off. Great. And then I can angle them. I can shrink them. These are going to be little jewels. Okay. So... <coughs> Copy, paste, do another one, and this time I'm going to make it bigger. 
I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to play with its proportions a little bit. Okay, now copy paste. I'm going to put this one over here. Okay, now I want to subtract all three of these or even just one of them from the, the background shape. To do that, hold down shift, click on all of them. And when you click on more than one path, you'll get these options floating above. These are called the Pathfinder options. And what you want to do is subtract the foreground from the background. The problem was I was overlapped on an additional path, so I've subtracted everything. <laughs> so, so you can start by just doing one from one, right? So I'll do one from one here and then subtract. And then that cuts it out, and you can see that, right? And then I'll subtract this one from it, but I need to put it on top. So that's why I had trouble, because they need to be stacked on top of each other. There we go. So now that's on top, and it will subtract the, the top layer from the bottom layer, like a cookie cutter. So this layer is now behind it. I need to move it on top. And then I can subtract it. So the reason it subtracted everything is because I had some below, some above. And it was subtracting it all from the one that was lowest down. Yeah? Mm hmm All right, let's look. Okay, so I made the crown, but I don't want to keep it. Because that doesn't really work with the, the personal patriotic in the same way. So... Instead of deleting it, I can just turn it off. Right? And what I usually do is I'll lock the ones that I turn off that I don't actually want. You know, like the freehand path, like this. Now, the last thing I'm going to turn off is my sketch, the image at the bottom, so that it's not showing through anymore. So I can see my clean vector shapes and see if there's anything I want to change about them. And I could not just manipulate the individual anchors, but if I just click it once instead of double clicking it, I could transform these shapes, right? I could squeeze them. I can rotate them until I'm happy with them. I'm not able to warp them. I don't get that option, but I can do these other little tweaks. Because remember, it's about the positive and the negative space. whether that matches your sketch or not, right? And then you can always redo it. So I'm just going to make little tweaks here, make this arm a little bit thicker, straighten it out, and make this one a little bit rounder. And a little bit thicker here. Maybe like that. And then once you're happy with it, actually, I liked it before. It's tricky. Right. Then when you're happy with it, you don't have to do anything to save it as a vector, but you can only see it as a vector within vector.com. Right? That's the problem. This is the limitation now. So when I hit export to save it, or if I hit command S, it will take you to this. I would like to be able to save it as an SVG file, but you would have to pay in order to do that. So instead, the only one it will let me do is a JPEG. The good news is, because I created it as a vector, I can make this JPEG as big as I want, and it will always be perfectly clean.